Hey booktube, it's Thea and this video is going to be my November and December wrap up. So in November, I read a total of nine things. Um, I'll really quickly kind of show you guys what I read and a little bit about them and their ratings. Uh, the first book I read in November is Sadie. Um, I read Listen to This as an audiobook. I know everyone suggests that you listen to it as an audiobook. Absolutely amazing. Loved it. Gave it five stars. It's like my first five star read in a long time. Um, absolutely agree with everybody else and recommend the audiobook 100%. It was amazing. Absolutely loved it. Um, I cannot wait to read more from her um, and just absolutely loved it. I then picked up Spider Gwen Volume 4 Predators. This is just the next volume in the series. Um, this I can't really talk too much about as it is a spoiler, but um, I didn't love this volume as much. I gave it three stars, which um, has tended to be kind of the norm for this series. I do love Spider Gwen. I love her as a character. I think there's just a lot of issues with pacing and in this series, um, but overall I still enjoyed it and uh, where I still enjoyed it and I gave it three and a half stars. And the next book that I picked up in November was The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. This was my November book a uh, book club book. Um, I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. Um, I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did. It did take a little bit of time to kind of get the story going, but once it got going, I kind of just like fell through it. It follows our main character, Estra, who is this like talented thief and she has this like magical ability and she like goes back in time to 1902 New York and has to kind of steal an important artifact which is needed to change the future um and I really enjoyed it it has it has a lot of like New York history and you get to see like the 1900s and it's like it got this gang and magic and fantasy and I really really enjoyed it I cannot wait to pick up the sequel and I believe the third one is coming out early 2020, but I really, really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. The next thing I picked up in November is Queens of Fenburn by Kendra Blake. This is the two novellas in the Three Dark Crown series, um, the Young Queen and the Oracle Queen. The Oracle Queen takes place, I want to say like a thousand years before the timeline of Three Dark Crowns. Uh, it follows um, Queen Elsabeth, who was like the last known Oracle Queen, um, and it talks about her story and why there are no more oracle queens allowed to rule and things like that and then the young queens takes place during the regular three dark crowns timeline and it takes place when the sisters are a lot younger right before they get separated um overall i enjoyed this i didn't love it as much as i love the series i still ended up giving it like a 3.75 stars um i do think that it does bring a little bit extra to the series, especially the Oracle Queen. You get a lot more background into why the Oracle Queen is this like legendary tale and kind of what happened. And then uh, the Young Queens doesn't really bring much to the world in the story, but you get, a look, get to see a little bit more from the sisters, which I really enjoyed. Um, but I picked this up, gave it like 3.75 stars and can't wait to pick up the last book in the series. And then I picked up Spider Gwen Volume 5, Gwenum, and Spider Gwen Volume 6, The Life of Gwen Stacy. This is the last novel in the series. I gave both of these three stars. Again, this is just the next two in the series and are spoilers, but um, overall, enjoyed them enough. Um, this one wasn't a strong really, didn't really have a strong ending. I still like Gwen Stacy. I just have a lot of issues with the plot and the pacing of the story. So I ended up giving both of these volumes three stars. Then picked up Queer Eye, Love Yourself, Love Your Life. Uh, this is just an audiobook that is narrated by the entire cast. It kind of goes through um, them, their like talents and their lives and you get a little bit about them and kind of how they got the roles for Queer Eye, and it was really enjoyable. Um, this was a pretty quick read. I read through it in a few hours doing some housework, um, and the, it does, it's kind of autobiographical where it, like, does talk a little bit about their lives, but also talks about, like, um, it's also kind of, like, if you're watching an episode where, like, Bobby talks about his furniture and, like, style, and, like, Tan talks about fashion, and Jonathan talks about grooming, and, um, and so it kind of goes through all of those things. Karamo obviously talks about um, like who you are as a person and like your mind and things like that. So I, I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Definitely if you love Queer Eye and you like the guys, um, it's definitely worth a listen. I'd listen to it as an audiobook just because it's like you're kind of, the audiobook kind of reads like if you're watching an episode of Queer Eye and I really enjoyed it. Gave it four stars. 
And the last book I read in November, I am beating myself up because it took me so long and I'm so mad that it took me this long to finally read it. And that is The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the first book in the Raven Cycle series. Absolutely loved this. I gave it four stars. Um, the, it took me a little bit of time to get it like, kind of into the story. Um, but I absolutely loved it. I gave it four stars. Cannot wait to read the rest of the series. Mad that it took me so long to read it because I know every I, I know so many people love this series and yeah it's one of those that it's like it's kind of hard to describe um, like what the plot is but when you're reading it I just like fell so I was so like into the plot and was like so interested in the boys and um, like what was going on but it's like a hard book to kind of describe but I mean everyone knows what the Raven Boys is by now and gave it four stars, loved it, cannot wait to pick up the rest of the series. For December, I read six things, the first one being the audiobook of A Deal of a Lifetime by Frederick Bachman. This is a really short novella, um, don't really know how to describe it, but it follows our main character kind of talking to his son about um, this experience where he quote unquote like killed someone but you like learn through the story that it's not as it seems um, it's a really short novella I think I listened to it in about a half hour um, it's not my favorite of his works but I still really enjoyed it I gave it like three and a half stars it's worth a read um, and again it's a novella it's an, if you listen to it as an audiobook it's really something that you can listen to um, really quickly and it's not very long so it's definitely worth a read, but I didn't love it. Um, it's not one of my favorites, but three and a half stars. And the next thing that I picked up was Green Lantern Volume 3. This is the next book in the series. Um, you can learn more about Green Lantern's history. You kind of meet one of the very first original lanterns and kind of what, who he is. Um, I really enjoy Simon and Jessica as the new Green Lanterns. Um, Simon has like some anger management issues and Jessica has anxiety so I think it's really important to show that um, these superheroes are human and they're flawed um, you can kind of connect with that and you can kind of see yourself in a as a superhero I think that's important as well um, this is I feel like this has been the weakest volume so far um, I gave it um, I gave it three stars. I think it's the weakest so far, but I still enjoyed it and cannot wait to see where the rest of the series goes. I then picked up Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sapetis. This has been on my TBR for so, so long. I don't know why it took me so long to read it, but I'm happy that I finally did. Um, I read this in a matter of a few days. I like went back and forth between the audiobook and the physical book. Um, I really enjoyed the format. It makes it very fast paced. Each chapter is a different point of view from the character. Um, but this follows four main characters as they're in the midst of World War II, took place during like 1945, um, and deals with themes of loss and pain and it deals with it deals with loss it deals with struggle um it follows our teenagers as they are basking on this like journey to get to board the Wilhelm Gusloff which is this like passenger boat that's supposed to take them to safety and you spend most of the book following them through the journey of getting to the boat and the actual like maritime disaster that is this ship doesn't take place until the last probably like 20 to 30 pages of the book um, but you follow them through the journey and that's really where you find that connection with these characters I this book was pretty emotional um, it's not the most emotional thing I've ever read but there are a few moments where I found myself crying really really enjoyed this I gave it um, I really really enjoyed this I gave it four stars I'm upset that it took me so long to finally read this, but I'm happy that I finally did, and I can't wait to pick up the rest of her novel. And the next thing I picked up was Over the Top. I listened to this as an audiobook. This is Jonathan Van Ness's autobiography. Um, it talks, it goes through his life growing up, um, moving to college and struggling with college and dropping out, and um, it deals with drug addiction, drug addiction, it deals with sexual abuse, it talks about, you know, his HIV, um, his um, HIV positiveness, and you learn quite a lot of things about Jonathan Van Ness, and he had, he's had quite 
an emotional journey. Um, I wasn't expecting to find myself crying through this novel and there were parts of it where I was learning about his who he is and more about his past and his life and they were pretty raw and pretty hard hitting um, but he doesn't hold back in this novel and he really kind of he really kind of strips it down and you really just you learn you really learn who he is as a person and it does talk about queer eye as well but it really kind of goes through his life and his story and growing up and dealing with his parents and um going through normal teenager things and drug abuse and things like that and this was quite an impactful read i gave it four stars um i'm really glad i read it i'm glad i've learned more about him um if you are a fan of queer eye if you're a fan of jonathan if you want to get to know more about him i definitely recommend picking this up um trigger warnings for things like uh, drug abuse, sexual harassment, um, bullying, things like that. There is quite a few hard hitting topics in here, but it's definitely worth the read. And I gave it, I listened to it as an audiobook. Um, but it's definitely worth a read, and I gave it four stars. I then picked up Green Lantern Volume 4, The First Ring. This is the next book in the series. This one was definitely a lot better than the fourth one. Um, it definitely kind of found its footing, and um, we dove into the the kind of the the meat of the story a lot more really enjoyed this I gave it four stars can't wait to pick up the rest of the series and the last book that i read in december and the last book of 2019 is one day in december by josie silver this is kind of a romantic this is kind of a uh winter themed christmas themed romance this follows our main character Lori. one day she sees this guy at a bus stop and kind of just like it's love at first sight and then um, you find out that he is dating her best friend and they both kind of have feelings for each other and their struggles through that and it's just kind of this romance that follows them through 10 years um i didn't love this i thought it had some really cute moments it was a very like warm winter read perfect for december um i overall gave it like three and a half stars i'm just not a huge fan of like chick lit um and romance novels um but this did have um and this is more of like an adult romance novel it's not ya so it's definitely more adult um i did enjoy it it had some fun moments it takes place in um in london so i loved seeing like the london theme and like the London talk and I love London so I enjoyed that part and did have some fun moments um I did have some moments where I laughed uh, but overall I felt it was just okay um and I gave it three and a half stars um if you like adult romance novels I definitely would recommend reading it it's a very warm cozy kind of winter December read um and I but I think like with December being such a crazy busy month with the holidays it was I kind of feeling was slumpy as well so it took a very long time to get through this um and it's not super thick it's only and it's not a super big book it's like about 400 pages or so and the font is pretty big but I think I just where I was at in the month it made it difficult to read and um it's just one of those books where and it's just one of those books where like not a lot happens on a regular basis through it so you like have to really kind of get through some slower parts um and it just wasn't quite what i was wanting but i overall did enjoy it and i gave it three and a half stars so here is everything i read in november and december what did you guys read over the last couple of months what was your like final book that you read in 2019 did you guys complete your reading goal if you've read any of these any thoughts comments and opinions about them as always if you like this video give it a big thumbs up don't forget to hit subscribe thank you guys so much for watching i hope you're well happy reading happy new year and i'll see you guys next time bye